Hi guys, welcome back to Brandy Sheree TV. My name is Brandy and today I'm coming at you guys with a little update video. I know it's been so long since I made a video, but I'm back and um, if you guys are interested, just keep watching. It has been months since I posted. I think the last time I posted, I was in Miami and that was back in August um, before my birthday. So it has been a while, but if you guys do know, or if you don't know, I am a full-time student. I'm in my senior year of respiratory school, um, and I also have a job. So really that's just kind of what my focus has been. I haven't really been focusing on like putting any content out just because uh, that's been taking up majority of my time. And the free time that I do have, um, I just, I guess I just didn't take advantage of making a YouTube video and just coming and talking to you guys. But I did get a couple of comments, a couple of emails, a couple of um, DMs on Instagram, just asking like, you know, how am I doing? Am I okay? And I really appreciate that, you guys. You guys are super nice. So yeah, I'm fine, I'm back, and I'm just making a video now just to update you guys. But before we get into the update, I do have a little giveaway for you guys because I thought I can't come back after months and not being here and not have like something special for you guys. So I do have a giveaway. For my giveaway, I am gonna be giving away my uh, 2018 Girl Boss notebooks. Um, they just look like this, they're pink with girl boss on the back i'm sorry if i'm gonna be sniffling through this video i think i caught a bug and i'm kind of getting over a cold i'm sipping some tea too shout out to my leo leo gang we out here <laughs> oh no that's too hot but um yeah so i'm gonna be giving that away and i'm also gonna be giving away just the full set the syringe pins along with the highlighters that I usually uh, give away with every note. To be considered for this giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel, follow my social medias, which I will put in the description box, which is just my Instagram, Brandy Cherie underscore, for the love of respiratory, and then shout out the respiratory page. And then once you're done with all of that, come back and comment your Instagram name and what year you are or where you are in your respiratory journey and I will be picking the winners December 26th. So it'll be open for, this uh, giveaway will be open for a little over a week. You can shout my page out as many times as you want, but um, I will be picking three winners. And yeah, that's what I have for you guys. So as I stated before, I am a senior in respiratory school. Um, and this year I took well, no, let's back it up. Let's back it up. I'm sorry. Let's talk about, I went to the AARC meeting, okay? I went to the AARC meeting in Vegas. Shout out to Breathe Easy, Amy. Shout out to Jackie. Shout out to everybody that I met, because I met a couple of people, but um, those are the only people I remember by name. I'm sorry. Um, but shout out to you guys. We were in Vegas. It was, I mean, that place was huge. I really recommend going to an AARC meeting if you've never gone to a conference. Um, yeah, it was super huge. I mean, it had so much going on. The exhibit center or the exhibit hall is what I believe they called it, was my favorite because we've seen a lot of vendors that we use. We actually found out some of the vendors are located in Georgia, like their headquarters are in Georgia. So um, we got to see a lot of vendors and a lot of uh, equipment that we use like day to day, like our ballers, our vents, um, the bronc equipment. And we just, you know, it's really nice to see a face behind the company when you talk to them because it's like, okay, well, you know, it's kind of like, okay, so this, this is what they kind of represent. And it's just, I don't know, it's just really nice for me to kind of make that connection with the uh, equipment and the brand and then with a face behind it and then someone explaining like, you know, um, things that you may run into, like when we have to troubleshoot certain equipment or when we find certain equipment, it's kind of just hard to deal with and we kind of opt out of using it. Um, when you have like a representative there that's like not on the phone and they actually have the equipment in hand kind of showing you like what you can do and how you can move around uh, certain things and troubleshoot certain things, it's really nice to have that and I really appreciated that from the AARC and the exhibit hall. Um, they had a couple of lectures that I attended, <clears throat> really nice. So I do feel like the AARC was super nice. I mean, they had tons of lectures. If you weren't interested in neonatal care, maybe you were interested in sleep study, or maybe you were interested in patient care, or I mean, they had so many lectures going on at once. 
Um, it was something for everybody to go to, something that everybody could take away from. But I do feel like as a student, it's kind of overwhelming because you're not in your field yet. So it's kind of hard to apply this information that you're getting to a field that you have not started in, you have not gotten your feet wet in, you don't really have a routine of what you do, you haven't really found out your habits or maybe things that you can work on, you haven't really found that out yet. So um, for me personally, maybe other students have, but for me personally, um, I, I haven't really found that out yet because I've only been doing clinical now. When I do my externship, which is coming up in spring, I'll definitely be able to apply that information if I can remember it. Let's be honest, if I can remember it. Um, but as a student, I feel like it's just good to go to to experience at least once. Um, and of course, because it was in Vegas, everybody went, my whole class went. Um, so if you are looking to like network or actually talk to hospitals that you wanna work for, um, work with, collaborate with, I definitely feel like you should look up your own state conference because I'm in Georgia. We have a GSRC, um, which is basically Georgia State Respiratory Committee. Um, I think that's what it stands for. I think that's what it stands for. But it's just basically the AARC for Georgia. You know what I mean? Um, we have meetings everywhere, all over Georgia and Macon and Savannah and Rome in the city of Atlanta. So, you know, you can always make one. I think they have two a year. So they have one in the winter and one in the spring or summer. So you can really go to as many as you want. Um, and because they're so spread out in Georgia, you'll definitely be able to find one near you versus the AARC, you have to get a plane ticket. You have to pay for a hotel. You know what I mean? You have to really travel out. Um, if your state doesn't have that, maybe you can start one up so i do have just a couple of things to update you guys on so like i said before i am a senior in respiratory school um i'm graduated in may 2019 thank you lord oh my goodness Whew. it's been a long time coming you guys um the classes that i took this past fall were i was about to say pharmacology girl i did not do pharmacology that was in spring I took mechanical ventilation part two, took part one over the summer. We took a hemodynamics class, which I think the correct term is advanced care monitoring. Um, we took a neonatal care class. We took a research class that had nothing to do with respiratory care, but I mean, whatever. Um, and I also had my clinical. I believe that those are all the classes. Yeah. So, so let me tell you guys about my uh, clinical rotation. So I was in my ICU clinical rotation. Oh, it was so great. I was in a pretty busy hospital. It's a level one trauma hospital. If you guys are in Atlanta, you know exactly the hospital that I'm talking about when I say that. I mean, they go everywhere. They're on, they're on every scene. Anytime it's a car accident, you can be out in wherever. This hospital will come. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Y'all know exactly who I'm talking about. I was there. I was in that ICU. So I went to the ICU. Um, it was super great. I got to do a couple of extubations. Um, I got to participate in an intubation because, uh, of course, the respiratory can intubate. I think this is at any hospital, but they really prefer anesthesia to do it. So um, when they come in and they, you know, put the, uh, they intubate them and they put the tube in, um, they just kind of want you to just bag make sure chest rise chest rise or you hear the air going through and make sure it's not in the stomach and then that's all we need from you um make sure the vent is set up and you know they're gonna leave and then i mean you know that's that's what we kind of do that's how i assisted with the intubation there we go so um that was super good but i mean i got to do so many excavations you guys i'm thinking about doing an excavation video because i've done so many i kind of feel like i'm a pro i don't know i kind of feel like i'm a pro at this now so yeah um ic rotation went great um i went to mickey i went to sick you um we peaked in mickey but uh, they don't really allow students there because those babies are fragile um uh, it's, it's not it's not it's not a place to really learn and that's not really their specialty so they don't really need you going in there like you know messing things up you know I'm just gonna say it they don't really need you going in there messing things up so um, I went there I went to the burn unit uh, I went to the ER oh my goodness that ER was crazy I seen I seen the craziest things I seen so much blood there you guys 
And I didn't even know, like, I was, like, feeling that type of way towards blood until I seen so much of it. Oh, my goodness, it was so much blood. Um, but that, that, that hospital was great. Um, I would definitely work at that hospital. Um, hopefully they hired me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was a great ICU rotation. Um, very on your feet, very hands-on. I mean, the vent checks, the suctioning. Uh, I mean, they, excuse me, the preceptor that I was with, I chose preceptor that I knew would express a lot of uh, confidence in me. And uh, especially at this hospital, they get such a heavy load. They're kind of happy to kind of let you do their O2 checks or let you do the second round vent checks. Um, so that was really nice to do. I kind of got my own workload. It's not like they let me do it like completely by myself, but um, yeah, it was really nice. It was really nice. I really, I really enjoyed my IC rotation. I will say that I got to do a lot of things, um, transporting. We use the Puritan. If y'all know about that Puritan, that Puritan is huge. I feel like I can transport with anything now that I've transported with the Puritan, to be honest. Um, but yeah, all in all, my IC rotation was great. I will say it was a great IC rotation. Sad to see it go. Happy to see it go, but sad to see it go because your girl is tired. I would be so tired on my days coming back from that ICU. My feet would hurt, girl. I had never experienced that in my life, but it was, I mean, it was, it, it was, it was all worth it. It was all worth it. You know, we're there for their experience and that's exactly what I got. Was a great experience. So, um, another thing I kind of want to touch on, which is kind of like a huge shift, but it was just kind of like how I was feeling through the fall semester. So last year I lost, um, someone really close to me, which is my great aunt. Um, she died of lung cancer. Go figure, right? Died of lung cancer uh, last November 17th, to be exact. And uh, this year, I remember last year when uh, she passed, I could not study for finals. Um, I think I even may have, I don't think I mentioned it. No, I don't think I mentioned it on the video. But I, I, I barely studied for finals. And because I had done so well during the semester, that kind of carried me into the grades that I got for the final um, or my final grades. It kind of helped me out because I did not do well in my finals at all last year, but I did well in the class overall. Um, so when I did not get the grade that I wanted on my finals, it was okay. But um, this year I kind of felt that again, but it's, I don't know, it's kind of hard when you're in school and you're kind of dealing with um, depression. I don't want to say I was depressed because I don't want to self-diagnose myself, but I definitely, did have like a cloud over me where I just did not feel motivated to do anything. Um, it started honestly around September and uh, because I kind of just started thinking about like, wow, this is gonna be the first Thanksgiving that I don't hear from her. Like around Thanksgiving, around September, October, she would, you know, call me and say, you know, hey, I'm coming down to Georgia. We're gonna come see the family, da, da, da. Like she would, you know, call me and I think I was just kind of missing those calls. Um, it's really hard to kind of go into a patient's room with a certain mindset or with a certain um, attitude when you're going through something yourself. And when you're dealing with death, it's different than, I don't know, like say if, you know, you're unhappy with like your parents or something like that. It's different when it's death, especially when you're dealing with sick people all the time. You know what I mean? You're kind of dealing with sick people and maybe they have some of the same symptoms that your loved one had or maybe they have the same exact condition that your loved one had and you kind of have to go in and you kind of have to just kind of just talk to them or you have to talk to the family members. It's, it's kind of hard to kind of take your feelings out of it. So, um, or even just not carry the burden on your back of how that patient's gonna be the one when you leave. I mean, I felt that like almost every day being in the ICU. So, if you guys have any advice on how to like kind of cope with um, your loved one passing while being in a hospital or just being in a hospital setting when you're gonna see like sick people all the time, please let me know. Leave it in the comments because somebody else may need it. But um, yeah, that was one of the biggest ob obstacles that I had to get over this year was just learning how to cope with that and just let the patient go when I left. Because of course you wanna treat them how you wanna be treated and 
treat them kind of like family, but it just wore down on me mentally so much because it just hit so close to home, you know? So, um, yeah. <laughs> um, moving on from that, everything else is pretty good. Uh, my senior year, I mean, everybody will tell you this is so time consuming. It is, oh, it's a roller coaster. Just being in like a medical major period because it, you have people's lives on your hands. Like it, it's when you go in for your shift, you know, people can plummet or people can soar. And it kind of depends on what you do. It really does. So um, you kind of hold people's lives in your hands. So it was super, it was, it was super stressful this year because this is really the last year for me. Next year, I have a couple of classes. I think I have like a mini master class, which is end of life care. And you basically kind of just give the patient's family um, like information on how you're gonna go about things, like when they decide they wanna make their patient a DNI, DNR. Um, just kind of like the process. We have another class that's kind of reviewing the boards. It's kind of a class just to kind of uh, debunk our brains from what we learned in clinical and teach us the MBRC way because if y'all know, if you know, you know. But uh, the MBRC way versus the clinical way don't match up all the time, especially when you're not with like picture perfect preceptors. I mean, nobody's perfect, but you know, when you're with preceptors that kind of get a hang of doing things and maybe you get into the groove of doing things that way, which may not be the correct way, you definitely need a little debunking and a little reconstructing on how things are supposed to be done the MBRC way. So that's the class that we're gonna be taking. I think we're also gonna be taking like a patient care, care class. And then I'm also gonna be doing my NICU rounds for the first three months of the year from January to March. Then from March to May, I'm gonna be doing my externship, which is super exciting because we all know your externship is gonna be like a place where you wanna work, you kinda of give them free labor, you work for them for the free three days a week, um, and you just hope they give you a job offer at the end and you just didn't give them free labor for nothing. That's what my next year is gonna consist of. Again, I'm so sorry, you guys, that this video has taken so long to come out, but trust me you guys you guys are on my mind so make sure you guys participate in that giveaway it will be closing december 26th the day after christmas and i will be shipping them out on the 27th you will get a confirmation email you will get a tracking number i got you make sure you guys participate in that that's my present from me to y'all merry christmas um, good luck on everybody's RT journey. I know we're done with finals now. I hope we're done with finals now because it, it, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty deep in December now. Um, I think today is the 18th. So, um, yeah, I hope everybody has a good day. I hope you guys are enjoying your break. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment to this channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.